folks, last chance to write a question for Mr. Schuster. If you have not submitted a question, please do so in the kitchen.
La ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we are approaching the end of our autograph session. We're going to do a quick group picture with everybody and Mr. Schuster. So how we're doing that is Mr. Schuster will stand here. If folks in the chairs and folks standing can come fill in, we will take one big group picture. The front, the front chairs here are reserved for our younger patrons who are still here and those who might need a super up-close view. If you are in a chair, please take a seat. No, no, it's all right. Should I test this thing? Oh, Hi, everybody. I have a fun little story. Before he starts asking any questions, I have a, I have a four-year-old who's just about five, and uh, he was talking to my mom last week. I was gone. My mom comes and uh, takes my place at my house when I'm gone so much, and I couldn't do what I do without my mom and my wife being like the dynamic duo helping to raise our kids when I'm gone. But. My four-year-old says to my mom, Nana, I'm a little bit scared to go to kindergarten next year. She goes, why, Luke? Like, he's like, I just, I'm, I'm scared of like being around other people and, and whatever. And she's like, Luke, you leave cheers in front of so many people all the time when you're watching Daddy Hero and he goes, oh, I know. When I see a microphone, I just got to get on it. <laughs> At our curling club in Duluth, we have a podium that has a microphone. You know, I'll go grab it and be like, give me a you. <laughs> okay, anyways. Hi. Thank you guys all for coming today. Thank you so much for being with us, John. It's, 
it's an incredible pleasure and honor to have you with us. Uh, we do have a few questions from the audience. Would you like to get started? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. I'm great. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this guy earn his living tonight. All right, fair enough, fair enough. All right, first one we got. Uh, what is the best and most fun you th thing you've gotten to do since winning the gold medal? Uh, the best thing I think I've got to do, honestly, is probably yesterday when uh, I got to attend the state dinner uh, to welcome the French president and his wife at the White House. Like, I mean, honestly, like, I mean, was it the most fun? <laughs> no, but you know what? Kudos to uh, kudos to this area because the top two things both happened over here. Because uh, when we actually and thank you for loaning your curling rock to me. To so I'll I'll be honest with you, very very honest. It was right after the games, but uh, throwing a curling rock down uh, NHL outdoor sheet of the stadium series game was and the way that we were treated like like USA chance people losing their minds uh, as and again I I hoped to be at a stadium series game, to attend one at one point, and there I was in a curling slide during the curling <laughs> with everybody chanting USA and losing their minds in the stands, and that was, uh, it was actually up there above three of the four opening ceremonies, like, okay. moments, at, I just can't tell you, because, you know, being part of Team USA is so special, and having everybody there being a fan of, of Team USA made it extra special, so. Absolutely. And being in Annapolis as well, home of the Naval Academy. Yeah, I mean, for sure. For sure. Being, there. <laughs> <laughs> being in the Navy Marine Memorial Stadium, I mean, only added to it, for sure. Of course. Um, this one starts off with I Heart Schuster. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. And um, what actually got you into curling, uh, you know, when you were younger? So when I was these guys' age down here, I used to go and watch my dad curl. We had a four sheet club that also had an upstairs. And, uh, and I would watch for an end or two, then we had a little pool room off to the side, and I'd go and play pool, or even, I think I was young enough, where we were even just playing pool with our hands. And uh, every now and then, I'd be, Dad, I really want to throw one of those rocks. Your, your game got done early, can I go throw one? He's like, no, son, it's men's league. <laughs> like, no, but seriously, but I mean, in that day and age, like, it was, it was when men played. If you want to throw a rock, come here on junior night. Finally, in sixth grade, uh, in my pre-algebra class, our pre-algebra teacher was actually our junior coordinator, gave out a flyer, and it was kind of end of the season, and basketball season was over, and I was a basketball player up through eighth grade, um, and said, come try, no strings attached, and I just wanted to go there and be like, all right, I know I can do this, and so I was like laser focused on, on what I was going to do, and I think I told a few of you guys to walk into the line, like, when I did a slide and slid out, and I actually shot tough for the first five or six years of my life, but I slid a rock, and I... Shot it to the other end, and I wanted to do it again. And I knew it was going to be something when I wanted to do it again and again. Uh, just that day, that it was something that was going to stick, and it stuck. And I think you guys all know exactly what feeling I'm talking about. Because there's something about throwing a curling rock. It's just... It's incredible. I, I don't know that it makes me want to do it again. Yeah, like, I can, hit, I can hit a bunch of golf balls, and yeah, when it's going good, I want to hit another one. But when it goes bad, like, I want to put the clubs away. <laughs> it never happens. With, well... Not often, of course. I've hugged a few in my day, and sometimes I'm just like, you know what I'm done. But, yeah. yeah sorry. Um, this one's for our very own J.R. Gross. Uh, how will the five rock rule affect the game going forward? You know, I, I don't think you'll see it affect it much at the club level. Um, it'll affect it a lot at our level because um, there's going to be, you know, you can, you can generate three point ends at our level very easily by using corner guards strategically and stuff, but at at the club level, I don't think it'll matter too much because you're not usually, a lot of times, um, you're not necessarily peeling rocks in front of the house very often anyways. Um, but it, it's actually really a lot of fun, and there's some strategy stuff you'll see right away that gets developed that, um, yeah, it, it really makes the game fun and it doesn't change a bunch. Don't be afraid of it. <laughs> um, I really like this one. Is Matt Hamilton as goofy in real life like we see on TV? Uh, he's as goofy as you want him to be. <laughs> like, no, I, honestly, Matt is a... I was afraid to play with him. I, tell, I told this story at the USDA board meeting last week. Um, I, I had an opportunity to have him maybe be on my team back in the 2010-2011 season, and I just didn't think I was quite ready for what he was, because he was literally a, he's a very abrasive, seemed like an abrasive personality. I always wanted to get in the middle of things, and then when we didn't get chosen for the high performance team, and like, he was kind of like, well, we, you can get chose, I can get chose, let's get these guys, and 
Um, he was really open to doing whatever he needed to do because he's just a great teammate. And honestly, like his big personality took a lot of pressure off the rest of us at the Olympics. You know, instead of <laughs> instead of like uh, you know the world coming after me and the trolls on social media, they were having more fun watching Matt Hamilton's mustache win or lose. So. <laughs> Truth. Uh, that's dead serious truth. I'm not even joking with that. Um, what do you focus on most in terms of off-season off fitness? And what would you tell a new curler to focus on? Uh, so for me, my off-season fitness, um, like actually since the Olympics ended, it was like all this eating and drinking that's going on. <laughs> but, um, no, honestly, like in 2014, uh, when, when I knew there had to be some kind of a change, I... Um, I go to the gym uh, three or four days a week in the summertime, and, and there's probably three days of strength and a couple days of cardio. I do it in the summertime. I actually do a ton of biking. Um, not I have like a commuter bike, and we have a burly trailer, and I like to uh, pull my kids and go book for bike rides with my wife. And uh, yeah, the last the last three or four years, I got a little bit more serious about nutrition stuff as well. Which um, my wife and I actually do isogenics, which is like a meal replacement stuff, and that's like our baseline, so like you have a, have a bad week, you have something to fall back on. That's great. Um, I really like this one. My boyfriend needs some inspiration. How did you propose to your wife? <laughs> Good luck, buddy. <laughs> so, uh, my wife's family actually had a thing that she had an aunt and uncle that said they were, uh, you know, they had been dated, they had been together forever. Like, probably 15, 17 years and they're later in their lives, like, and so when are you guys going to get married? Now we're going to get married on some Tuesday. So they got married on some Tuesday, literally. The funny thing is the courthouse doesn't marry people on Tuesdays. They had to make a special thing to actually marry them on a Tuesday. Um, so, so that was it. I, I proposed to my wife on some Tuesday in October and uh, I was at her apartment that we were living in at the time. and. Um, but I actually, I was going to make dinner and she's like, oh, can I come help with anything? I said, yeah, like, why don't you, uh, oh, there's a bottle of wine, why don't you go open it? And she's like, okay, well, um, where's the porch room? Like, oh, it's, we had a drawer that we used to call the garage, like the junk drawer. And uh, I said, it's, in the, it's in, the, in the drawer below the garage. She opens up the top one and, and I'm like nervous now because I know she's going to find the spring box and she opens it. I'm like, no, honey, the, the drawer below. Oh, okay. Open the other drawer. Oh, and I had the corkscrew, like, leaning on a ring box, grabs the corkscrew and closes it. And, uh, and there I was. And I actually, it, it worked out fine. I, and I grabbed her by the shoulders, and I guess going through her head is like, oh my god, is this not a wine opener? Because it wasn't a classic corkscrew. It was kind of like she thought maybe, like, but I walked her back and I, like, opened it up, and then I was able to grab the box myself and propose to her. But, uh, on some Tuesday, but hey, uh, you know, whoever that was that asked the old question, um, we were engaged for two and a half years, so just because you per just because you get the question, Bob, doesn't mean you get married anytime soon. That's funny, you tried to be so clever, and then, and then your wife's just like, no, I want the wine. She, yeah. Um, do you have any tips for a new curler to improve their game? I think that applies to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah honestly, the most thing, the thing you can do, I think, that helps the most new curlers is to be comfortable, centered above your slider. So, um, really, when you can get to that point where your slider, where you can be, like, honestly, even like, and I don't want you to go gliding up down the ice if you're not ready, like, standing up, but if you can center your slider under your body and make it where you don't need to lean on anything else and use anything else, that's when you're now able to do the things like, slide out directly at the broom and be centered, like, very good. Um, but center on your foot, and that's that. That's definitely, uh, I'll, I'll show you for instance. So I was in an art class. Um, I was in an art class in, I, in junior high, and, and you had to do character chair poses, and everybody would pose, and then our teacher one day like stands on his foot, and he's like, okay, everybody drew caricatures, and there was a, you put a head, and a body, and a foot on one leg and one head, and the guy's like, all right, and he draws a straight line down from the center of your nose, down through a straight line down, and if your foot wasn't directly under the center of your head, it was an incorrect drawing because your foot has to be directly centered. So I think that's like the best way, like you can even like if you're helping someone with a new curler, explain that process to them. And obviously your foot's going to be slippery and it's tricky, but when you're sliding, you can get centered above your foot. It will give you the best chance to have the most success at curling. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Uh, what's your favorite beer? Free. <laughs> Uh, okay. 
actually, if you guys ever get a chance to come to the Midwest, um, there's a little brewery that is north of Duluth called Castle Danger Brewery up in Two Arbors, Minnesota, and it's kind of spreading like kind of throughout Minnesota. It just got voted Minnesota's favorite beer. They have a, it's an ale, it's called like a cream ale. It's like, it's not hoppy at all. It, yeah, Castle Danger Cream. All right. Or free. Yeah. <laughs> there's definitely something you said for free. Um, how many times a day do you recall that, hey, I'm an Olympic gold medalist? <laughs> yup. <laughs> No, no, no. I, I mean, it, it, it's awesome. I, I'm really honored to be an Olympic gold medal, to be an Olympic champion, um, and to be a curler, and to be an American, and to do all three together is, uh, is something that every day I'll pitch myself, and um, every day I'll, I'll be proud and happy to, to share, you know, my experiences with, with people out there. The two people I always say that are always welcome to put on my gold medal are curlers and kids. And, uh, and actually, just yesterday, I was Meg with Megan Duggan, the captain of the women's hockey team, and she was 10 years old uh, in Boston, and one of the gals from the 1998 gold medal winning hockey team from Nagano actually came and, um, and went and did something, and, and, she got, and Megan got to wear this girl's medal when she was 10 years old, and she said from that day forward, like, she knew that that was what she was going to focus on, and she put every ounce of her energy into it, so one day she could be an Olympic gold medalist, and it took her three tries at the Olympics because they got silver, silver in 10 and 14 and then they finally came through and got the gold medal here in 18 and you know what, whether it be curling or anything, if you can inspire um, kids to go after something with everything they have, that's something that I want to do and that's why if you've looked at my medal closely, the ribbon is very tattered because I love sharing. You talk about the emotions that uh, you felt while you were on the podium listening to the Star Spangled Banner. I can't believe that it was the way it was, but I actually had to kind of detach emotion from um, after we were four and two, and like I actually told my wife in the walk, oh, I walked my family after we were two and four uh, across the Olympic Park, which was like a mile long, and I told my wife, I was like, I can't believe like curling is breaking my heart again. The Olympics is breaking my heart, and I was like, maybe I'm just like I'm a heck of an Olympic trials curler, and I just there's something about the Olympics wasn't working for me, and and I think I realized after. I'm going to ruin the movie for all you guys, by the way. <laughs> I realized on my walk back, and, and my wife was like, you just got to be the skip the, the skip that got you, like, be the skip that got your team here. I'm like, no, our team got here. And she's like, no, like, the skip that your team deserves. And, um, and yeah, and, and I kind of thought, and I told, I was sitting on, the, on this knoll outside of the thing, and I just wanted, I was like, you know what, if I never go to another Olympics, because I don't know that I could deal with that again, had it finished ugly, like the previous two, and like this one was kind of going. Um, I, I'm going to give my kids three games of something they can show their kids. Because in 2006, the coverage of Cut Out the Leeds Rocks, you've never seen me throw a rock the year we got a bronze medal. And I was like, well, I, no, in all honesty, I was being serious. Like, my kids are going to have nothing to show their grandkids that they can be extremely proud of because, like, I was grumpy and whatever through the three Olympics because they weren't going our way and, and I'm a guy who wears my heart on my sleeve. So I said, no matter good, bad, or otherwise, I'm going to enjoy these three games and give my kids three games of something that they can be proud to show their grandkids. And Absolutely. holy cow, like, and I, so I detached, like, I had to detach emotion. So standing on the podium, actually, I can't tell you that I've made it through a, a Star Spangled Banner watching the Summer Olympics without, like, crying. And actually, like, my biggest tweet of all time came when a swimming team, the swimming team had won a gold medal at the last Olympics. I was like, there's something about Team USA, that, like, on the top of the podium scene that happened that gets me every time. Oh, yeah. And when we were on top of the podium, it didn't get me in that way. And I, no, and, and I, it almost kind of even like broke my heart, but it just, that was the place I had to get to to do what we did. And, uh, but it was utter enjoyment. It wasn't, but I had to kind of detach the emotional side of it for me. Very cool. Um, the Potomac Curling Club is ready to expand. Should we bring in more sheets? Or create more bar space. <laughs> oh no, it's definitely the sheets for sure. Uh, well, I mean, I, I was talking to Haley and gosh, first name's killing Matt. Steve, Matt. You, you got a normal, yeah. Uh, see, I, yeah, sorry. Uh, I was talking to them on the way here, and they said that you guys have around like 300 members and three or four, and yeah, it's, you're definitely going to need more sheets if you're going to have to if you're going to expand this place because uh, we're going to grow this game, and we saw the passion that 
exists for curling on the East Coast. If any of you guys actually even saw the social media pattern um, during that was going nuts while we were winning our gold medal, it was the Eastern Seaboard was insane, and I can't, I can't wait. Hopefully, there's the real estate space possible for the East Coast to do the expansion that I think uh, there's definitely offer for. It. I mean, obviously, I'm going to do anything I can to help that. Yeah, I sincerely hope so too. It's, it's so great to see more and more curlers come out, more and more people say, "Hey, you know, you do this. What can you tell me about it? Because it's awesome." Yeah, it's, that's something that I think a lot of us have. I always tell people curling has the way of attracting the best people, and maybe not the best people, but the, the way our sport, what it's built on, the spirit of the game, and the camaraderie and the social aspect brings out the best in people. So I think we get the best people too, but we definitely you get the best out people when you're at curling clubs, and I think that's why uh, from people who start curling uh, don't go venturing away from curling very often because it really just has that way of, of sticking because you get to see the best of people when you're out here. Sure, yeah. Um, where do you keep your medal at home? Uh, the last place it was and then not. My, so my gold medal uh, is in generally in that little sunglass case you see there. Uh, is it my hand? Closer somewhere. Nobody left with that, did they? <laughs> um, yeah, and no, my bronze medal was in a, in a drawer. I, I had it on display for a while, but again, because I like sharing it so much, it's hard to, like, I have just a beautiful glass display thing that my neighbor growing up made for my 2006 medal, and it was in it for a little while, but then I'm like, oh, I gotta get it, and it was kind of tricky to get out of there, so. But I have a beautiful display case someday for one of those things. <laughs> just later on. Um, could you please give us your brief advice on mastering the mental part of curling? Um, you know, honestly, no. From a, from a skipping standpoint, what I can do is what I can tell you as a curler is maybe not the mental aspect of it, but if you just pay attention to what's going on out on the ice, whether you be a skip third, second lead. So okay, lead, pay attention to what the ice is doing. Maybe that's if you're a person who uses stopwatch, clicking hog to hogs to see, oh, the draw weight is slowing down. It's the same, whatever. Um, the communication part is something that our team really, you know, excelled at. Um, our team also is able to be brutally honest with each other and have a little bit of fun with it. And uh, I've seen that with a few different teams around here already. Um, but yeah, the, for me, it's always if I can just focus on what's going on and control what I can control. Uh, for me, the game always has kind of come easy. Okay. Um, let's talk about the gold medal game for a little bit. Uh, at what point during the game did you first think, I think we've got a shot at this? I when, when, Actually, when, when Nicholas kind of hit and rolled over in the third end and left the, it was kind of like a, it was pretty a natural double, but um, I had to throw pretty hard because it was kind of cross house, and when that rock hit and, and we made that double, I actually was relatively certain we were going to win. Wow, just, just off of that. Third end, yeah, because it was one of those shots that if I make this, like, I, it was going to make them extremely uncomfortable, and I knew that it was going to be ready. I, actually, I, I missed a run back to give them the two in the end before that, um, and I actually threw it exactly where I wanted to throw it, but it didn't quite. It wasn't quite running the same as our practice earlier in the day. Uh, it didn't have as much bite. So, like the rock, again, I threw it exactly where I wanted to throw it. I came to the other end. I told Ty, I was like, "Man, we played practice earlier, and I threw it just like that." And he's like, "Oh, I've been like this in games the whole time." I was like, "Okay." <laughs> but that's, again, I, you know, he thought I was making up an excuse, and I was just honestly that I thought I was going to run like practice did, and then, um, then when we came up, out and made the next one the next end, I knew it was going to a that we were going to make those shots the rest of the game, and b that I was going to maybe make those guys a little uncomfortable, and we saw because he had a shot for a pretty easy shot for two the next end that he missed, and we stole one, and that was kind of the turning point. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, what about the uh, the last end after you made the five ender? Uh, how are you keeping your nerves in check? You know what, for me, I just uh, told the guys, all right, focus, just, you're going to be throwing simple shots, um, and this ice is shot, easy shot making ice kind of thing, so, um, and then for me, it was just going to be to just soak it in, because, you know, those guys probably should have shaken hands, and they would have shaken hands, but they were shaken up, and, well, they were, they seriously, they were, they were, I mean, their their dream was just coming, cra came crashing down with that five under, as our dream was coming true, so, um, they were shaken up and wanted to just kind of get a few more rocks in. And, uh, and clear their heads. And uh, for me, I was just, they gave me 15, to, which ended up being 25 minutes because it was kind of an end and a half yeah. of just being able to soak in what was going on, like what was going on. And, and yeah, it was kind of almost like a victory lap. So I was just taking in every single 
sight and smell and whatever was going on there because I knew it was going to be something to remember forever. Um, do you brew stack after every game in the Olympics? And if so, what are some teams' favorite drinks? <laughs> no, not at the Olympics. Uh, on tour with those same teams, yes. I mean, room stack, and we throw our rooms in the room bag. Then, yeah. Right, yes. But no, uh, yeah. Uh, honestly, most most teams on the in Canada they drink they drink whiskey and they think it's called rye. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, yeah, most most teams pretty much just drink beer. It's easy. Yeah. You can get a pitcher. It's cheaper. We're all starving athletes. <laughs> we don't make a lot of money with on the tour, so yeah. Um, given everything your team's been through, what have you learned and what would, what is uh, any advice you'd like to offer about teamwork on and off the ice? Uh, actually, you know, I, I think the thing that became most important that I maybe didn't even realize was I've been on teams, I thought, okay, I can build a team position by position. Um, I feel like I'm a scary judge of talent. That's why I know that these Boston boys are going to do big things here in the very near future. Yeah. Seriously. It's not no, they might, they're coming for me. They might be, they might be coming with me. Who knows? Seriously. No, honestly. Sign him he knows. I, tell, I tell him. I don't just... I, I tell him. Seriously. But, um, but I always thought I could build that and... Um, and have put pieces in place and maybe have to change a piece here and there. And, uh, but the longevity of our team this year made it where we had this now track record together. We played at three world championships um, and had, you know, had our backs against the wall. Things like at the Worlds in Edmonton last year, we started two and three, and we won six in a row. So when we saw, okay, we got to win three in a row and then maybe a tiebreaker and two more, like we won six in a row against these same teams uh, just last year. So I think. Um, for us as a team, it was having that that knowledge of what we had done together in the past and and that helped us maybe be more ready to do what we needed to do in the present. How it helped you focus in a little bit better. Yeah, for sure. And, and again, our, our team, and we knew each other's, like, the goods, the bads, and the uglies of everything that we do, and inside and out, and you knew the thing you needed to say to this particular guy or what you couldn't say to this particular guy at this particular time yet. Um, this, this one's an interesting one. Are the Canadian curling team's Olympic parties really as epic as they say they are? Uh, I bet they weren't this time. No, you know, it's, I actually, I, I just realized this when I talked about it at the board meeting, but um, the, I, we can even thank the Canadian guys, Team Kui, for helping us get to uh, where we got to, because we were actually playing at Continental Cup, and I don't know if you guys were paying attention during Continental Cup, but we were making everything, mm -hmm. and they were like, and we kept on getting these MVP chants from the teams, and uh, and Ben Hebert made the comment to somebody like, "Holy cow, if those guys come play like this at the Olympics, like they're gonna win gold," and he was being serious when he said it, yep. and that was something that like had us pointing out to each other, like even the Canadians think that we're the best team when we're playing our best. Yeah, there you go. So thanks, Canada. Thanks a lot about, you know, specifically the gold medal, or were you just hoping to, you know, put on another really good show? The only thing you can control is what you can control, and that's um, is going there and having, like for us, we talked about peak performance, um, and after we're two and four, decided, again, that was kind of what I told you about, is being the best version of yourself and the person that, you know, that we've all trained to be, and that's all you can do, and and whatever happens, happens. And right. like, like you, you can't think so much about outcomes. You got to think more about the process. Right. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the elephant in the room, and it's quite literally written here. How can I become an Olympic champion? <laughs> How old are you? I am thirty-three. Mm. Are you good? <laughs> are you good? Yeah. No, I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> My team literally demoted me from skip. Okay, I, I got an idea. I got an idea. Hold on. Don't worry, I haven't been demoted before. Uh, no, seriously, I was I played I was playing third on Team Benson the year we won the Olympic trials to start the year, and after our fourth event halfway through Utica, I played like the worst game of my life. And, like, going back to playing Lee Schuster. Okay, yeah. I got demoted at Utica too. <laughs> okay, maybe you have a future. <laughs> No, I, but you know what, the, the thing about that is I could have been mad about it or whatever, but I just embraced it. And I still was vicing on the team, I was still calling the house, and that's why I shot lead and called the house back in 2006. I don't know if any of you guys 
maybe wouldn't have even known that because I might time playing third for Pete Benson was very short, but <laughs> but it actually helped because he would have trouble. Like honestly, I I would miss a couple shots and he'd be like angry with me and couldn't even like focus to throw his own shots. And then, you know, Sean missed shots and he was playing third and I was playing lead. I was like, yeah, Sean sucks. Let's focus on making your shots. <laughs> I couldn't say that when I was missing them before. No, of course not. Of course not. All right, uh, last one we've got here. He doesn't suck, by the way. I would just that's what I would be able to say to him. <laughs> I clarify that. Uh, last one we've got here. If you had to leave a message on one of our rocks, what would it be? <laughs> you know what? I think it would just be believe. Believe. <laughs> and, that, and that's not just for like a whole, that's honestly, like, you, you sit in the hat, believe you're going to make a shot. So, or anything bigger than you want it to be too, yeah. It's, it's a, lot of, a lot of self belief in, uh, in our game. All right. Or maybe it would just say, hard. <laughs> I did write that on somebody's rock, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there it is. <laughs> That's usually what I say when I let it go. All right. Well, um, do we have any other questions that people forgot to write in? Yes, Alan. When's the movie coming out? <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, it goes as scheduled. No, we haven't actually signed with anything yet, but. Uh, we're probably pretty close to that, and if it... No, seriously. Like, seriously. Alright. Uh, I would say, if, if it got out by 2020, it would be really good. Like, they're shooting for, like, holidays of 2019, but... That's not bad. But these are also, like, investors. They're not actually, like, the movie side. So these are the guys with the money, so we'll get made. <laughs> so, dream casting. Who do you want to play here? I don't care. <laughs> no, hopefully he's good. Alright, that's all you can ask for. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. I, 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 seriously, I haven't, I haven't watched movies, honestly, since I was like in my like teens and early 20s. So I don't even know, like, and, and everyone's like, oh, how about this guy? I'm like, he's old. I'm not that old. I'm kind of old. I'm not that old. Alright. Uh, anyone else? Matt, Matt, Matt. Oh, Matt. Matt. Uh, I'll put in a good word for it. Alright. Oh. Yeah, so, so you gave the USCA a golden egg. Do you think they might take that and start like a competitive circuit, kind of like the Pinties here in the U.S.? Uh, you know that. That's actually it's funny. Like the C, the currently Canada their CCA doesn't actually run the Grand Slams. That's like a different entity that kind of ran that, a spawn off of um, the World Curling Tour. But there is something coming up from the WCF this year called the. It'll be the World Series of Curling, which has the top, it's going to have a men, eight men's teams, eight women's teams, and eight mixed doubles teams. Uh, and there's four of them. It's, I think the first and the last one are in China, and I think the U.S. is hosting one, which I think is going to be in December somewhere, which I don't think they've announced yet. Uh, but that's kind of the start of, you know, maybe like this worldwide, you know, kind of curling that's going to maybe be more on TV. Um, and do I see a, like a Pinty's Grand Slam in the U.S.? No, but hopefully maybe some of these TV... Uh, companies will maybe realize that there's something to know that there's money to be made in our sport and can get it more of it on TV and um, and honestly like give you know we maybe have a chance to make a living curling now our curling team this year if um, if things go the right way and you know if you can give kids a chance to again make make a living playing a sport that we think pretty highly of would be a pretty cool um, pretty cool thing to be able to do. Where can you go? Thanks. Yes. <laughs> um, all right. Anyone else? Okay. We have a gift for you. Thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate you. We, we, actually, we really appreciate you coming by, taking the time to talk with all of us. It it really means a lot. You know, not just for the club, but for you know the GNCC curling as you know as a whole. Just Thank you so much. Thank you for everything you did. I, I just love being on the show. Thank you. A big thanks to Haley for making this possible. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for Matt.
for driving them here. <laughs> We're lucky we made it here after that one bottle, I won't lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. We wish you a good evening and a good summer. Don't forget to come out to the annual meeting on May 19th. Watch out your email for your voting link for the board of directors, and be sure to sign up for the summer work party. Have a good night. And game night on May 11th. What? what? Game night, May 11th. I believe so, yeah, yeah. If, I, if not, I'll send it to you. Yeah, it's most of the Friday people who play games. Yeah.